This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Clean Cut Barbershop, located on 21 East Kelsey Avenue in Salt Lake City, Utah. To schedule an appointment, visit cleancutbarbershopslc.com. Walk-ins are also welcome. Mention Short Story Bingo and receive $5 off your first visit. Now, on to the show! Ooh, that's a bingo! Is that the way you say it? That's a bingo. You just say bingo. Bingo! How fun! Episode 38 in full effect. My name is Nate Chacon the Third. Welcome to Short Story Bingo. If this is your first time, welcome to our uh, wonderful platform. If this is the second time, then retention program is working. What we do on this podcast is I read a short story that you might not have uh, ever read before. Uh, I'm a glorified narrator. Uh, it's like Audible, sort of. So what we're going to read this week um, is going to be... I wanted to go back a little bit to... Well, a lot of it. We're just going to dive back into like serial killers. And uh, we're going to read about a Korean cannibal gang the and this is spelled c-h-i-j-o-n so i'm going to be pronouncing it as shijan uh but it's about the shijan family and uh super excited about it it comes out of the book serial killers true crime 10 sickening true crime stories of serial killers that tortured hacked and butchered their victims Okay, they, they, they absolutely could have worked on the title. Pretty long, uh, winded title there for the book, but um, I'll have the uh, you know the post or excuse me the uh, link to get that book. Um, obviously in. Uh, the info uh, for this particular episode. Um, Make sure to uh, check out the last one, which was a sci-fi love story. Episode 37 was called, the name of the uh, actual story was called Partners. Um, That was was certainly a fun one, especially as I get the end. I was, uh, I didn't expect for it to just like go straight love story, like, but whatever it was so cool i still appreciated it and it got pretty good reviews but uh i have some pretty crazy news here uh well let's do the the random twitter follower shout out and this week uh goes out to uh, my boy at the producer joe that's t-h-e producer joe he's a sound uh, sound engineer out here for uh channel uh, 13 fox news good friend of mine he also is a awesome uh music producer as well um just a great individual and a good follow on uh twitter at the producer joe i think that's the same thing for his uh, instagram as well but um let's get into the top downloaded countries and states um this is the part that i'm uh, tripping about okay so with the countries uh i think it was the kind of, i think it was the same last week but um uh, in in the order that they came in Sweden beyond the United States of course because the US is uh, you know they got we hold them the number one spot but uh, two three and four okay uh, are Sweden Canada and the UK all right okay this is one two three on the states part okay for the first time episode 38 for the first time Utah has been dethroned as the number one always usually it's like i do the two three four after utah okay just to, because i you know i'm from here so uh you i don't know whatever but number one drum roll please california then utah and coming in third Maryland, Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Yo, I saw that when I looked at my analytics. I was like, get the f*** out of here. But uh, that's pretty exciting, man. So, peace to California. I mean, I am, um, I don't know who's, who's all listening out there, but I certainly appreciate it. That's for damn sure. Um, with that being said, man, I'm super excited for the weekend. I hope you are too. Happy Podcast Friday to you. Uh, short story bingo is in full effect and uh, of course we got to get into the intro music so we're going to read about the Shijang gang some Korean cannibals hmm yeah makes me really hungry I don't know <laughs> the short story bingo episode 38 
Short story bingo. Short story bingo. Short story bingo. Short story bingo. Sometimes they're funny and sometimes they're sad. Most of the time they're funny because I hate to be sad. Short story bingo. Short story bingo. Short story bingo. Short story bingo. But don't take my word for it. Spare fingers. Yes. The Shijan family was a gang of criminals that held a grudge against the rich, and they had a very odd way of punishing them. Oh, God, get ready for it. They murdered and ate the flesh of their victims, who were usually rich customers in department stores. Extra specific niche. Um, I I was uh, thinking maybe they might have went like the you know Robin Hood route. Uh, maybe just steal from the rich, give back to the poor, but uh, had a different uh, take on what they should do to these folks. And so they uh, decided it was the best that they um, kill and eat them. <laughs> God. Um, okay, so the Shijan family was not, air quotes, a family in the strictest sense. Uh, I mean, um, I feel like the strictest sense of being in a family is uh, fucking being a, a family uh <laughs> they were a group of men led by kim kiwan uh, and if you want to look him up his last name is spelled k-i-h-w-a-n i know that you know when i'm listening to my pod other podcasts that i like to google if i'm just chilling at my desk or whatever so yeah they were led by a group of or there were they were a group of men led by kim kiwan a prisoner who had been released from prison Okay. After serving his sentence, Kim did not receive any formal education and was a petty thief that had been in and out of prison since he was young. Kim Kiwan held a great grudge towards the rich and the society that made poor people like him suffer, excuse me, while continuing to make the rich people even richer. After and honestly that could be like a that is a grudge that it, you know, that's the grudge that keeps on giving because <laughs> that's, you know, because you keep seeing that poverty stricken uh, attitude, um, even amongst the group of people that you're hanging out with. And so you develop a disdain for, um, you know, the rich. But I don't know. This guy went a little farther than that. After his release, he decided to recruit a number of people that, like him, shared the same hatred for the rich in their society. I wonder what that recruitment was like. Was there a poster? Um, do you hate the rich? We want you. And uh, do you like to eat human flesh? We want you. <laughs> Over time, he gathered six members. How much time, though? Like, would like to know that number. Like, was it a week? Because that's a little quick for people to be like, yeah, I'm super down. Was it a month? Was it a year? I mean, a year would there's a there would indicate that there's an extreme vetting process which to some degree you know I would appreciate you know like uh, you come in for an interview to be uh, part of this gang and it's going to start uh, becoming cannibals and uh, if there's a couple questions um, that you mess up I'd like for you to be vetted out of the process sir it says here on your resume that uh, you're uncomfortable with paprika on steak. Can you kind of dive into that for me? Um, yeah. Um, um, it's because the pop. Just joking. Oh. <laughs> Over time, he gathered six members of his gang, which he later named Shijan family. The group was composed of ex-convicts, his friends when he was in prison, and unemployed workers who blamed their status on the rich who ex uh, extorted what little money they had. Victimized uh, personalities, okay, this is a good start. Initially, the Shijan family would kidnap rich people from high-end areas of Seoul. They would obtain money from those they abducted under duress. This modest operandi lasted for about a year until they decided to devise a more systematic approach to pouring out their rage upon the wealthy. The gang wanted to obtain a list of some of the wealthiest people in South Korea's capital. In the end, they were able to get a hold of the mailing list of the exclusive customers of the Hyundai department store by blackmailing one of the establishment's employees. So that, I mean, I guess... 
Yeah, that's right. Hyundai is made in South Korea. Isn't Kia also made in South Korea? I'm not going to look it up, but I think that, I mean, this is a random thought that kind of came into my head. By blackmailing one of the establishment's pl- employees. You better give us the... F- f- I just need a mailing list. What, what, what would they blackmail them with? Like maybe telling the employee that they'll tell his manager that they gave him... Their, that they were given the mailing list by him so that he would be fired? That would be pretty fucked up. Yeah. You don't want to be outed as the guy that gave... But that means that... I don't know. I would like a little... I, I certainly would like a little bit more context to that, but... I think that... Because... I mean, but Seoul... So, I mean, South Korea is a pretty... I mean, it's not like a third world country, right? I feel like it's not. So maybe you can find another job if you get blackmailed. Or are you getting, are you getting blackmailed like your family's getting... Put on, on the chopping block and they're like, Yeah, man. You fucking tell... I can um, at the list uh, at the list was the business's top 1000 customers. Oh shit. Okay. Okay. Who paid for their purchases with numerous credit cards. The group would randomly pick a name and choose their next victim. Damn. The Shijan family would locate the selected uh, rich person, kidnap him or her. Cause uh, we want to make sure that we're, you know, not just uh, choosing a him. I mean, it is random. So, I mean, we could go, they could just go like 10 hymns in a row and then hit a her, you know? Um, the Shijan family would locate the selected rich person, kidnap him or her, and take him or her to their hideout in the hilly part of the city. The group owned a house far from the city and in total seclusion. Naturally, I would hope so. You wouldn't want to. Just be, I don't know, H.H. H. Holmes killed a bunch of people in, just in Chicago. I mean, he didn't really make it super, um, you know, not obvious. And uh, the Cleveland Strangler kind of did the same thing. I mean, to the degree that the fucking meat shop next to his house was shut down because of the goddamn stenches that were coming from his house. Anyway, they decided to live in total seclusion. Okay. There, they would torture and mutilate those that they had kidnapped. It is not known if the group performed sexual abuse. How is that not known? But after committing the murder, they would cut up their... Okay, because their victims couldn't say anything. All right. Uh, They would cut up their victims and eat their flesh raw. God, doesn't that... I mean, it just makes my... I was watching a video yesterday of chimpanzees eating... um, Well, it was about a, a particular group, the Nagogo. And it's spelled N-G-O-G-O, um, if you want to YouTube it. But uh, they had a population in 1996 of 142, rad in fact, doesn't matter. Um, but there was, they were hungry. They, there wasn't enough berries or something. I mean, foliage. I mean, they're in the fucking jungle, so I don't understand that part. But they were hungry for meat. And so they killed a monkey. And I didn't expect this shit at all. But, like, they're, you know, they the eating the monkey and I can understand that part like you can see like the head I don't know you you see flesh obviously and it's you know whatever and um I'm just like watching and then you it sounded like like I mean the narrator said that you know they're ripping limbs off and passing them around um as if you want this leg do you want this foot uh are you into a hand today um but like as you're watching it it just sounded like a twig broke or like a branch was was broken and like the video was just on the fucking on the chimpanzee holding the monkey's arm and just like just you saw the fucking break happen oh my god okay anyway so that just came to mind um yeah it is not known if the group performed sexual abuse but after committing the murder they would cut up their victims and eat their flesh raw To dispose of what remained of their victims' bodies, the Shijan family would either bury them on the remote hillside surrounding their hideout or hmm, burn the corpses on a made-to-order incinerator big enough to hold human bodies. (laughs) Oh, my God. A made-to-order incinerator? You guys... 
we we got a custom order for uh, you guys. No, we we uh, we like your ovens. Uh, we uh, big fans. I know that Rick. <laughs> God, you crazy, Rick. Um, he made us a roast in one of your guys' ovens. And so, anyway, um, we would like one that's about six feet tall, okay, uh, width, um, I don't know, how, how wide am I? Uh, what's that, about two feet? Let's make it four feet wide, just, I don't know, just to make sure. And then, um, depth of it, oh, God. Uh, when you sit down, how far back do you go? It's about three feet. Let's make it about five feet. So I want it six feet tall, four feet wide, and, you know, five foot feet in depth. And that should, yeah, that should cover it for what we would like to do. Uh, this again, custom order. We certainly appreciate it. Oh, and the degrees, um, definitely got to go past 500, uh, which is, you know, your normal oven. We'd like it for it to hit, you know, 1500 degrees celsius i don't know if you guys can do that i mean i think that's maybe uh close to what a star burns at but um <laughs> a made to order incinerator and burn corpses on a made to order incinerator big enough to hold human bodies okay the last person that the group kidnapped fortunately escaped the gang okay before he was tortured and killed he saw the hideout the incinerator and some scattered belongings that he was certain didn't belong to his captors. <laughs> Holy shit. That's, there's always that one, man. You know what I mean? There's always one that just gets away. They have a broken foot or something, but they're still, they still have that. The, the adrenaline pumping through them, and that is a big kudos to just human like will to live. Um, but this guy was like looking around. He saw the hideout, uh, the incinerator. That's not for cooking pig, man. And some scattered belongings that he was certain didn't belong to his captors. There's a pile of clothes there. There is a pile of clothes and there is blood all over them. So, and I don't think that's going on Jimmy over here because Jimmy's 5'1". That looks like something that would fit on someone 6'7". Not sure if you guys were aware of that. Um, none of you guys wear hats, and that's a whole pile of hats. So I don't know. <laughs> he tipped off the police, and they responded quickly. Good. In the hope of capturing the culprits that had been associated with a number of disappearances in Seoul. So they didn't. Even, so the police weren't even on to. I mean, they were. Sounds like they were obviously trying to work the case, but we're having. No luck because uh, victims weren't, you know, coming back. Mostly because they were probably getting eaten. I don't know. But this guy got away and let him know, hey, man, uh, over, those, over there in those hills, way too many hats in uh, piles. And uh, I saw an incinerator. And I'm pretty sure I saw a charred body on it. Uh, looked similar to, like, when my Aunt Carol uh, roasts a duck. And we don't eat it because she charred the whole fucking duck. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go over there and check it out because there's a ton of people disappearing. On November 1st, 1994, all of the Shijon family, and again, Shijon is spelled C-H-I-J-O-N. Look them up. And Kim Kiwan were charged with the murder of the five people. Also, it was only five. I don't mean it like that, but yeah, I mean, it, w it was fine. <laughs> Who had reportedly been kidnapped in the same year. Throughout the trial, the perpetrators did not show any remorse and gruesomely detailed how they ate their victims to relinquish, uh, to relinquish their faith in humanity and sate their anger for the rich. Okay. But these people, I, I would, and there's not a victim list, but I bet these people... They're just like regular people just trying to buy a Hyundai. Imagine that, like just being on a list because you bought a fucking a a, a, key, a Hyundai. A Hyundai is a good example, actually. That's that's a, a an okay car, you know. Uh, the Santa Fe's have stepped up their game, you know. This is one of their flagship vehicles, uh, and I'm getting punished because I enjoy a crossover SUV uh, to make sure that my family is uh, well taken care of because uh of that 
I'm getting incinerated? Come on, man. Come on. Hondas? They don't sell fucking Mercedes Benz out in Seoul? You guys couldn't find an employee to fucking... Uh, even a, a Mini, well, 94, I don't know if Mini Cooper was... But, I don't know, man. Something... Hyundai. Hyundai. Let that sit in. <laughs> what would be... What would be... Would it be Hyundai out here, too? Like, if if you were, like, going to be like, yeah, you know what, let's make sure that we're going to go for the rich. Um, Tesla? No, nah, we're not going to try to blackmail an employee from Tesla for their mailing list. Those cars are too... They're not Hyundai. I'll tell you that. It's not a, uh, a prime vehicle uh, for, you know, it's not a Hyundai Kona or a Hyundai Genesis or a Hyundai Elantra. Come on, man. That's crazy. Five people. So five unfortunate victims were at the hands of the Shajan family uh, because of their um, anger for the rich. All the members of the Shajan family admitted to the murders. I uh, why wouldn't they? Uh, attributed to them, uh, excuse me, all the members of the Shijan family admitted to the murders attributed to them, and one of them even claimed that his only regret, regret was they weren't able to murder more wealthy people. Okay, so they were on a mission. It didn't, you know, it didn't fucking, it didn't matter at all. In 1995, all seven of them were executed. That's the Shijan family, man. We're going to keep it pretty simple to that this week. Uh, pretty short one, but also... You know what? Let's take a look at this. Uh, episode 38 is in the books, but I want to look at the Shajan family. Just take a quick gander at some of these guys. Oh, Google knew who the fuck they were real quick. Um, okay, so they were founded in 1993 by Kim Ki-wan, a former convict. Yeah. Okay. And it was six other former prisoners, as we said. Okay, Shijan. Da -da -da. Uh, the only regret that they had not killed more. All oh, these guys look like... I mean, they're, they are gold. They are, oh, they're for sure. What is, is this guy fucking crying, man? They look like the, 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 the pictures of these guys look like they're, they, they're taking it in as if they are like superstars. I mean, they are being interviewed by the media. Uh, this one's a little different. I mean, all their heads are down in this picture sitting in chairs uh, uh I, this looks like they're all exposed as far as their genitalia jesus man real life is ho yeah these guys oh this was a picture okay so like like it was saying they detailed out how they killed these folks this picture is showing uh one of the members uh holding an axe to a doll uh in their uh midsection um, probably, you know, it showing how they in fact did it. Uh, yeah. September 21st, 1994. That's a picture from then. Yeah. These guys, uh, were big. Um, yeah, they were super shitty. Fuck them. That's really weird, man. The Shijan family. Yeah. Oh, and there's a, oh, there's a. Well, I'm going to post a couple, I'll post one or two of these um, links on here because there's some backdrop story beyond the story that we just read today because, uh, I don't know, I like to go down that path and it looks like there's some videos, so if I find a good video on YouTube um, of them, uh, then I will also post that as well. Um, just check it out in the uh, more info tab, um, or on the description, excuse me, for this particular episode, uh, share with your friends, let them know what's going on, uh, have some, we got some comments on, uh, the iTunes, uh, certainly appreciate that, five out of five stars still, um, and, uh, yeah, if you haven't, uh, reviewed or rated yet, please do, I, uh, you know, the algorithms are real on that, on that platform, so, uh, it's much appreciated, honestly, and I read them all. So uh, episode 38 is in the books. Again, my name is Nate Chacon III. We just read about the Shijan family. And, um, yeah, man, really crazy kind of group of guys here uh, that just kind of made a name for themselves by eating people that were rich and wealthy buying Hondas. <laughs> uh, we got a slew um, of other episodes that you can listen to. I suggest Fred West. Uh, that's I think that's episode twenty nine 
Um, but just look up Fred West. Um, obviously, the Scarface Al uh, Capone one is uh, super popular. Um, we can even take a look and see what is the most popular in the last three months. Let's take a quick peek here, shall we? Okay. So, yeah, in the last... Okay. There we go. All right. So, wow. Okay. So the Telltale Heart also, that was episode 35. That got a pretty good amount. And that's because it's a pretty epic story from uh, Edgar Allan Poe. But uh, yeah, I would uh, take a look at that one. And uh, again, Fred West, that's one of my favorites. So, yeah, just a couple of the ones that I like. Scarface Al. I mean, I like them all, but um, folks always ask me, like, what would you, you know, suggest that I listen to for my first time? And it would um, be some of those ones. Also, the William McGonagall one, because that was so random. That was so random. But um, anyway, thank you guys so much for uh, rapping with me. Uh, and uh, yeah, next week we'll be dropping episode thirty-nine. I think I want to. I think I'll I'll stay in the groove of uh, serial killer for one more episode, and then we'll go back into some other stories because I got some other books that uh, I just recently acquired. Um, I want to read out of uh, H.G. Wells. Uh, he has a ton of just really cra crazy stories, and then of course H.P. Lovecraft. I've been waiting to read. Um, you know, some sci-fi stuff out of him. H.P. Lovecraft is very, very unique in that he was uh, doing a lot of, cr uh, not crazy, excuse me, um, in-depth sci-fi in the late 1800s and early 1900s that resonated uh, still to this day. So those are some pretty epic authors that I want to uh, read some stories from. But I think I'm going to go the Sailor Killer route one more time next week. Not one more time, but just concurrently because uh, they just fucking fascinate me, man. This is, it's just so intense, like what some of their motives are, how they go about their process, you know, what, what that whole thing entails for them. Um, and I don't know, man, if it's, uh, you know, all the same, um, keeping it down that road. And then also we're going to be reading uh, in the future some myths and legends of uh, ancient Greece and Rome. Um, just want to kind of get, you know, start uh, feeling around and... Uh, read some other things and stuff like that too but i think we're gonna go see our killer route next time again but anyway short story bingo episode 38 my name is nature comb the bug and third and we are done dun, dun, dun. spare fingers yes